land of beauty and contrast. A gone release wilderness. Rainy season and drought collide in an everlasting cycle. One of the most fertile places on the planet. Containing 10% of all animal species on Earth. Living in nature is always a struggle for existence. But these days, wildlife has to fight to survive in the face of habitat destruction and the spread of human influence. Thailand is known for its dazzling mega city, Bangkok. Its exquisite cuisine. Saffron-dressed monks. Exotic beaches and a world-famous nightlife. Hardly anyone knows the hidden treasure and almost secret life of this old Asian culture, bordering Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, and Myanmar. With year-round temperatures in the 30s, Thailand is one of the warmest countries on Earth, cooled only by rain in the rainy season. Ancient rainforests thrive under these conditions, as does one of its most enigmatic inhabitants, the great hornbill. Great fruit eaters and great predators, hornbills are amongst the largest and strongest birds in the forest community. No less than 13 different species of hornbills live in the forests of Thailand. One of these is the helmeted. Another one is the white crown. This is the brown hornbill. The rufous-necked hornbill. The smallest of them all, the oriental pied hornbills, live primarily on various species of figs that fruit throughout the year in the forest canopy. In many cases, the growing roots of the fig tree encircle the trunk of a host tree and finally kill it. Figs are very healthy for the hornbills as well as other birds and animals. Yet, it is known as the strangler fig, a parasite. The only occasional threat to what could be looked upon as a life in paradise is the binturong, also known as the Asian bear cat. Although mostly looking for fruit, it is also keen on eggs and small birds. It is easy to escape the predator. The bear cat has lost its chance. Figs will have to do. Peace is again restored to the forest canopy. Nothing better than a nap in the trees after a meal. Only 26% of Thailand remains covered by forest, reduced from 60% just 50 years ago. In the darker undergrowth, restricted in many areas by poor penetration of sunlight, strange and rare parasitic plants can be seen. Not 
to mention a poorly known and recently discovered tree with leaves that turn a flaming red once a year almost luminescent on the green tapestry background. The tropical forest is characterized by high rainfall. Around half of all animal and plant species call the rainforest Seasons change between rain and almost unbearable heat and drought. So does the landscape. Endless tropical rainforests. Dramatic cliff-ridden mountains. Fertile landscapes dotted with trees. It's a busy time for mature hornbill males. The end of the monsoon season. He's looking for a suitable partner above the forest canopy. The lack of underwing covert feathers allows air to pass through the flight feathers and causes the sound of a moving locomotive. The courtship begins mid-air. As any gentleman would do on his first date, the male brings a gift for his intended. A fig, naturally. Convincing a female is not an easy task. It can take many days and nights. But these days, they are not alone. Once a year, hornbills gather into large groups for a few days to socialize and look for partners. There can be hundreds, sometimes thousands of individuals. The male has to repeat a series of courtship displays many times during these highly stressful days. He rubs bills with the female, plays, touches her, even kisses her, or at least so it seems. she can feel his passion. She finally accepts his courtship, reluctantly, still playing hard to get. New gifts are exchanged. A male hornbill keeps up to 20 figs in his crop and may regurgitate them whenever needed.
On the edge of the rainforest, another landscape shows its splendor. Grassland dotted with trees covers the land. Here, we find a herd of the largest land mammals on the planet. The wild elephant. A symbol of wisdom in Asian culture and famed for its memory and intelligence. Today, there are only about 1,500 wild elephants in the country. The Asian elephant is highly intelligent and self-aware. It is capable of a range of emotions, including joy, playfulness, grief, and mourning. They spend up to 16 hours a day eating plants and consume up to 300 kilograms of food each day to survive. Elephants live in peace with the Asian ox, the gaur. One ton of pure muscle on the hoof, strong and massively built. Gaua live in small herds of eight to 11 individuals, one of which is a mature bull. More males may join the herd for mating and individual bulls may move from herd to herd, each mating with several other cows. Elephants love water. Besides drinking it, it keeps them cool. A male elephant on the other side of the small swamp is in must, a sexually aggressive period among elephant bulls. During this time, he may try to kill anybody or anything in his way. After the water, the elephants throw dust and dirt on themselves to protect their skin from the sun and create a layer of protection from insects. The male in must is showing aggressive behavior and the females form a protecting circle around their young. Even though the male decides to retreat, at least for now, the elephant herd and their young seek shelter in the forest. Further down the swamp, the sambar deer live in small herds of four to six individuals. One male, the stag, an adult female, and her recent young. Sometimes a stag will dig his antlers in urine-soaked soil and then rub them against trees as a way to mark his territory. He will mark himself by spraying urine into his own face with a highly mobile penis. Sambars live in peace with most of the other species congregating near the swamp. However, there are enemies. The most dangerous predators of the sambar are tigers, leopards, and doles, the Asian wild dog. The stag gathers his herd on a small island in the middle of the swamp. He prefers to defend his herd or attack predators in shallow water. When defending the herd, the stag stamps his feet and makes a ringing call that makes the dogs nervous and warns the other members of the herd of danger.
tries to lure the predators away from his herd. The wild dogs may attack in groups, but for some reason they retreat. It might just be too hot for them. Or perhaps they're not hungry enough to make the effort to decide to wait for another chance. It's mating time. During the 24 hours when the female is in season, the male will approach her from behind before mating. Sambars have extremely sensitive senses of hearing and smell. They are highly developed, which helps them detect predators and challengers. Another male has arrived on the scene, a rival. Sizing each other up, the two stags move into position for an unavoidable fight for dominance. When sparring with rival males, the competing sambars lock antlers, trying to push each other away. seem inspired by the fight nearby. The contest of strength has only one winner and one loser. The heat and humidity triggers a dramatic change in the weather. Thunder in the distance. The monsoon rain feeds the tropical flora and fauna. But even rain doesn't seem to halt the sandbar's battle. And yet, in the end, the intruder admits defeat. The dominant stag resumes his courtship. The intruder must wait for another chance. It takes a hot sun to burn away the clouds after the rain. Everything is back to normal at the swamp. However, something is missing, or perhaps somebody. The wild dogs have succeeded in overpowering a young sambar and are now busy ripping the flesh out of its young body.
the Sambar stag can do nothing but observe. In a hidden corner of the remote area, a strange and rarely seen construction emerges. A shallow cave with characters and drawings. Like old French cave art. But this is an elephant construction. Trunk made, not hand made. The elephants have dug a huge hole in the ground in search of salt, an important dietary supplement that apparently they are not able to find elsewhere. For years, these incredible mammals have excavated this hole into an impressive cave. Every night they come here, nervous and unprotected from attacks, mining the cave for its life-giving salt. Seems like a popular venue for elephants. Bung Boropet, the largest freshwater lake in central Thailand. It covers an area of 224 square kilometers. The combination of reed beds, lotus swamps, grassland and fringing woodland make this a great birding spectacle at any time of the year. A frequent sight here is the pheasant-tailed jacana, known as the water pheasant. This mystery bird is unique in the sense that it is the only member of its genus. Another bird to be seen here is the pied kingfisher, waiting to catch its favorite meal, a fish. This is the purple swamp hen, also called the sultana bird, famed for its very loud, explosive call. Pheasant-tailed jacanas are polyandrous, with females having up to four mates at one time. They mate from March to September, with each male building a nest made of floating vegetation. After mating, time for a little cleaning. The tropical rainforest is home to a wide range of trees. 
like abstract objects of art, they reach majestically for the sky. There is a lot of life in the rainforest canopy, big and noisy life. Although the gibbon is not a monkey, it certainly looks like one. It is a primate member of the ape family, cousin of gorilla, chimpanzee, orangutan, and human. But this is a real monkey, a macaque. One of the five species of macaques in Thailand. Apart from humans, the macaques are the most widespread primate genus in the world. A stump-tailed macaque, known for its pink or red face and yellowish babies. For a curious baby stump-tailed macaque, grass is always greener on the other side of the hill. The Assamese macaque, a highly social species, spends a lot of time on personal hygiene, helping each other find lice and insects and other goodies. The dusky langur, newborns with their bright yellow-orange fur, which will change to grey when they are three months old. The mangrove swamp on the tropical coastline is home to another of Thailand's macaques, the long-tailed macaque. It is called the crab-eating macaque because it is sometimes found foraging along beaches for crabs. Lately, it has also become a scyanthrop, living off human resources. Many ways of crossing a river. Some macaques just jump right into it. Some need to measure the temperature before taking the big leap. While this female, a mother, seems to wait like the captain of a ship. The macaques feed on fruit grass, roots, or bark. Because of their anatomical closeness to humans, the rhesus macaque has been the prime choice for conducting research on human and animal-related products. This would include the development of the smallpox, polio, and rabies vaccines, and the creation of drugs to manage HIV. The adults are good at jumping, but for this youngster, it comes naturally too. Just like for human gymnasts, the asymmetric bar takes practice. Both female and male macaques are promiscuous, mating multiple times with multiple partners.
The Assamese macaque usually prefers living at high altitudes, normally about 500 meters. Fruit eaters, like most macaques, they live in multi-male, multi-female groups of 10 to 50 individuals. Their behavior consists of foraging and social interaction, along with grooming and sleeping. However, as a female will mate with an average of four males a season, she often risks the wrath of the alpha male. Peace is soon restored, and life goes on as though nothing has happened. Until next time. When seen in water, macaques are usually escaping from danger, regulating their body temperature, playing, or searching for food like algae, occasionally small insects, or fish. After five long days of courtship, the female hornbill finally permits the male to mate with her. She inspects the nest the male has selected for her. It seems to be acceptable, but she's already starting to redecorate. From now on, the male becomes fully responsible for feeding, maintaining and protecting his mate and coming chicks. He feeds her by regurgitating food items one at a time. Another duty. Clay and mud is collected. The female uses the clay to seal the nest entrance, preventing predators from attacking and eating the eggs or chicks in the future. The gender roles of the pheasant tail jacanas are reversed, with females defending three or more males. The eggs are left with the males for incubation and parental care. The female defends the nesting territory.
The female great hornbill has now spent 35 days incubating her two eggs. The male is constantly searching for more food for his partner and coming chicks. This is father care. Two small hornbill chicks see the light of day, a miracle in the tropical forest. As the chicks grow, their dietary requirements change and they need more protein than figs can provide. The female refuses what the male has brought. He must let the figs fall to the ground and regurgitate something more appropriate for a growing bird, like an insect. takes three months for the chicks to mature. The proud father supervises the growing life at the nest with tender care. Another miracle at Bung Porapet. Two chicks have already left their eggs. The third is still fighting to escape the shell. shell is removed so that predators are not attracted to the nest by smell. Amazingly, the young are able to run, swim and dive as soon as they have hatched. But sometimes the confrontation with the real world is too much for a newborn pheasant-tailed jacana chick. Chicks may remain with the male for up to two months after hatching. The northern part of Thailand is characterized by mountains and steep cliffs. Doi Changdao, one of the highest peaks in the country, with dramatic cliff-ridden mountains as high as 2,000 meters. In this hostile environment of rugged, rocky terrain, the long-tailed goral is one of a few species that can survive the harsh landscape and cold temperatures. Like ballet dancers, they jump elegantly from one cliff to another. The goral eats a wide range of plant material, grass, herbs, and tree leaves. They typically live in small groups of four to 12 individuals. Mating time is November and December, and the mother will give birth to only one foal at a time. The goral has very few natural enemies because their habitat is so inhospitable to most other animals. Testing each other out is usually more a game than a threat.
The female hornbill and one of the chicks has now left the hole in the tree, leaving the other behind. The view and the distance from the tree to the ground must seem terrifying. The chick hesitates. Perhaps it is dazzled by the green world outside. The female attempts to lure it out with a fig in her mouth. The ceiling of the nest entrance makes it difficult for the chick to press itself out. The fight might take hours, even days. Watching their offspring struggling is like a kind of labor pain for the parents. And then the chick falls, like an airplane in distress. The first encounter with the real and unknown, but instinctively familiar world. Finally, the young hornbill is airborne. Although the landing seems a little bit out of control. The male continues to stay as close to his offspring as he can. rain starts pouring down, like a harsh welcome to the real world. The inhabitants of the tropical forest always welcome the rain. At least, most of them. Hornbill chicks stay under the parents' care for up to six months or until the beginning of the following breeding season. As always, when the rain stops, there is a delightful coolness and freshness in the air, like a new beginning in the tropical rainforest, a new morning. is created. Individuals are born. Another generation takes over. Species have taken billions of years to form. Hopefully, we will let them stay a little longer.